This is part of a conversational video series called Public Health Art 101. The subject is mission statements. Specifically, we'll talk about growth as a mission. We'll do a document review and try to think about what this means for public health. I suggest you read McKnight's chapter, A Rationale for a Community-Based Approach to Health Improvement, because I want you to take a perspective from that article that says, as the strength of a system grows, the strength of a community dwindles. So in public health, we're thinking about the health system and people who live in communities. To help us think about growth as a mission, consider this letter written by an MD, an executive, at a large local hospital as she explains that she's leaving for another state. She uses the letter to talk about some of the accomplishments during her term. She talks about implementing an electronic medical record system, which is a big deal. And towards the end of the paragraph, she says that we can add the latest bells and whistles to fix some of the challenges you've been handling since we implemented EPIC. Bells and whistles is a figure of speech. You don't want to put too much weight on that. But it is important to think about and to pay attention to the way health system leaders value innovation. In public health grand rounds, the speaker will often say that innovation drives health care costs or that it's a major driver in the health system or in the economy in general. So I think bells and whistles can be relevant to a discussion about growth in the health system. Next, she talks about the implementation of the governor's plan to change the way health care is delivered and paid for in Arkansas. At first, she describes it as a hurdle. Then she says that the program has increased our revenues and has increased demands for our services. So a public health policy question here is, did the governor's plan set out to increase revenues for hospitals? And did it set out to increase the demand for hospital services? Or is that an unintended consequence of the policy? Or is it a calculated short-term cost of trying to improve the health of people in Arkansas? Either way, I don't think it's presumptuous here to say that she's declaring this as a positive, as an accomplishment of the hospital. Next, she talks about all the clinics that have been developed in the area in the last few years. She says all these clinics have been successful in serving patients out in the community and in providing easy entry points for patients to access the specialized services of other physicians here. So a mission question here would be, are these clinics designed to grow the reach of the system, to increase the influence of the system, or is it to increase the capacity of people in those communities to be healthy? Another way to ask the question is, were these clinics intended to meet the demands of a community, or were they intended to create demands in a community? She addresses that with her next paragraph, where she says the clinics have created an unprecedented demand for our services. And then she goes on to give some statistics about how much the hospital has grown. And she says the hospital will continue to grow to meet this demand. Then she says the hospital is bursting at the seams and hardly a day goes by that they don't have patients waiting for rooms. She finishes the letter talking about new beds and floors that are to be opened at the hospital, about a new service line model they'll be using, and congratulating a peer for the planning and construction of a new medical tower. Growth is not an explicit mission of this lady's hospital. But it seems clear in this letter that growing and increasing the demand for services of the hospital was something that she and the hospital set out to do. So what are the implications of having growth as an objective of a healthcare organization or of our health system generally? I'll be glad to follow up with what I think are some implications of that. But first, I'd like for you to read McKnight's article on the rationale for a community-based approach to health improvement. Then look at your healthcare organization's mission statement. Then look at two or three documents sent by executives in your hospital. So ask yourself a few questions. Is your health-related organization meant to grow? Is that explicit in the mission statement? Is it explicit or implied in the communication of your organization's leadership? Whether it is or not, talk about why it is or why it's not. And what are the implications of having growth as a mission? I'm looking forward to talking more about it in class or online. This is part of a series of videos called Public Health Art 101. Through these videos, I'll share what I've learned in school. For each topic, I'll present questions. And these are not just rhetorical questions. If you live around here and if you care about health, I want to have a conversation with you starting with these questions. If you don't live around here, discuss these concepts and questions with people who practice public health and education near you. I've tried to make the questions suitable for a mainstream health or public health course as well. Now I'm going to be talking like I'm confident, like I have this all figured out, but I don't. 
I'm just trying to be concise and hopefully provocative. I'll send you more detailed references, examples, and explanations upon request. Each of these videos is a draft. If there's something you think I can do to make this video better, let me know. Or if you can make them better, make them better. But either way, let's start having a conversation around these videos because I want to talk about the way we talk about health in Arkansas.